All right, guys, this is a intro to SQL or SQL, and then objective is to uh, obtain information from a database. Database can be Access, Oracle, um, many different databases out there. So, <clears throat> what does SQL stand for? It's Structured Query Language, or SQL, which is Structured English Query Language. Uh, it was developed by IBM early in the 1970s. Uh, the current standard is an ANSI, or SQL 99 version. Um, and then there's a newer version, which is SQL 3, or SQL 3, which is partially being developed right now. Um, some SQL examples, and I'm going to reference when I say SQL, it'll be SQL. Um, you can select, insert, update, or delete. Those are different things you can do um, when you're writing SQL um, to modify tables. Okay, uh, and your basic um, SQL structure is your select. Now, <clears throat> when you're trying to find information on a database, when you in the select column, which is an attribute list, this is where you're going to select something like um, s select, uh, you know, a student ID inside a student table, um, and then on the from is where you're going to put the table, which is going to be student. So, for example, right here, you'll select student ID because that's what you're wanting. You're wanting the student IDs, and you're getting that from a student table. Okay, the student table is the master table, and where, you know, that can be different conditions like, um, you know, what else do you want from that table? Uh, if you just purely go student ID from, you know, the student table, then you're just going to get a whole column of the student IDs. Now, the where is where you can kind of narrow down a little bit more of which student IDs you want. Okay, and here's an example, <clears throat> Pine Valley customer table. So here's your different tables, where again, this is where you'll put them in this, in the from. So for example, customer T, which is customer table, you'll put that there in the from, because that's where you're getting the information from is that table. And then the attribute list can be, for example, customer ID. So if I'm wanting all of this information right here, but I don't want any of this information, which customer name, address name, city, state, and zip, I just want to clearly see customer ID, I would put select customer ID from student T or student table. Okay, so this is what you're going to put in for the select and this is what you're going to put in for the from okay and this can be done many different ways you can do you know select customer name from order table or excuse me customer table or you can do select customer ID comma customer name and then from will be customer table okay and then if you did that, if you did customer ID, comma, customer name, and the select, again the select, and then the from is customer table, it will display both of these columns right here. It will not display any of these. Okay, and you can do the same thing with like an order line table, order table, or product table. Okay, so again, an example is select which lists all the states in which Pine Valley has customers. Now if we go back to this table, we're wanting all the states. Okay, so we're going to do state in the select and where are we getting that table or where are we getting that information from? We're getting it from this table which is this whole table. So in the from you put customer T or customer table and that will display all the results for the states. Okay, so again, list all the states in which Pine Valley has customers, select state from customer table. Okay, now you have a distinct option. <clears throat> now, what does a distinct option do? 
Now distinct allows it so you don't get duplicates. So SQL allows identical rows within a table. Why? You know, removal is time consuming. You know, removing, you know, multiple Floridas, for example. You know, if we have multiple Floridas or multiple Utahs or Hawaii, you don't want all that information, okay? And it's not always de desirable and not necessary. So if you use distinct, this option will remove duplicate rows, okay? So for example, you'll put select and then distinct and then you'll put state and then from customer table, okay? And that will remove all duplicate entries where, you know, it looks, I don't, you know, we have a Florida here, Florida here, Florida here. It'll just give us the one Florida. It won't allow it to give multiple duplicates, okay? And so <clears throat> if we have another example here, distinct select, list distinct states in which Pine Valley, custom, Pine, Pine Valley has customers. So you'll put select and the distinct. And again, distinct is to remove all duplicates, state from customer table. Now this right here, this is the end. This is, you know, telling the query to run this and then run this and then stop. Now, if you had this right here, Access or Oracle would only run this, but it would not run the from. Okay, so you want to make sure that this is at the end of all your queries. Okay, and you know we're going to have a select and condition. So we want to retrieve the products and their price, which are over three hundred dollars. Okay, so you'll select product description. Now again, these are not tables. These are going to be inside the tables. So we want to know the product and their price, which are over 300. So we'll, we want to know the product description. We want to know the product finish. And we put standard price in there because we want to know the price, which is 300. Okay. And we select it, or excuse me, we retrieve this information from the product table. And where it says where is, this is the condition. So the condition is going to be which are over 300. And so the standard price is going to be greater than 300. Okay. And if we go back to this, unfortunately I don't have a screenshot of this, but it would be this table right here. But it would be almost the same thing where you have all this different information, customer ID, customer name. And so in that previous example, you know, you'll have your product description, product finish, and then standard price, and it's going to retrieve all the information that is greater than $300. Okay, and we can have multiple conditions. So if we want to retrieve the products and their price, which have a natural ash finish and are over $300. So again, in the select, we're going to put our product description, product finish, and standard price. And where are we getting this information from? We're getting it from the product table. Okay, again, the product table is right here. Okay, and where, <clears throat> excuse me, standard price is over 300. And, and this is very important, if you're going to have multiple conditions in the where clause, there needs to be an and. You're going to do where the product finish equals natural ash because, again, we want to have the natural ash right here. And when you want to find a, a product like this, you know, you want to make sure you put the equals and then the parentheses. Okay. Without the parentheses, it's not going to find this natural ash that is over $300. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is called a wild card, okay, this, this asterisk. It's a wild card option. This is to retrieve all the attributes of the selected rows and no need to explicitly list the attribute names in SQL. So you'll select the rows for all products that are either cherry and under $200 or are natural ash and over $500. <clears throat> so this is going to retrieve all the rows in this table. So you don't so this is a little easier instead of having to put each like product description, product finish, standard price, 
um, you know, all these different rows, which would be like these, the customer ID, customer name, customer address, city, state, and zip. Instead of having to put all these in the select, you can just put that asterisk and it just automatically selects all these. Okay, get it from the product table where <clears throat> standard price is going to be less than 200 and the product finish equals to cherry. Okay, or because again, under or or are in standard price greater than 500 and product finish equals natural ash. And again, remember we have this right here, and this tells the when we run this the script, it's going to run here and then here and here and then it's going to run here and then it's going to stop. Okay. <clears throat> now you have a format output where you can do product description and is available in and product finish as furniture comma standard price as price from product table okay <clears throat> now special searches there's different special searches which um, some of this we won't go too deep into but for example if you're wanting to get the date you know this is the format you know you can put like if you want this specific date or you can put order date like and this is gonna pull the month okay if you're just looking for the month which 11 is November you're gonna put just 11 and then a wild card after that again that's the asterisk it's gonna select all those rows and look for 11 okay now order by option is a result of a query sorted by values of attributes so you have your select your from your where or your order by and it's defaulted in, in ascending order now I'll give you an example here <clears throat> now to retrieve a list of products in descending order of product description and within each product description ordered by product finish ascending again is the default value so you'll select the wild card Okay, and again, this is going to select, oops, excuse me, and again, this is going to select all the rows from the product table, okay, and then you're going to want to order it by product, descri product description and product finish description. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to collect all the information and it's going to put the product description and product finish in ascending order, okay. Now here's some aggregate functions and we're going to skip this last one or this slide right here. This is just for some practice and I can include a link with a, a file if you guys like of this database that you guys can do some practice on. But here is called an aggregate function. Now to calculate a numerical value from a given relation mostly applied to an attribute, you have your select which you have your aggregate function. Okay, and you're from and you're where. Now what is an aggregate function? <clears throat> aggregate function can be where you need to count, you need to sum up some information, a max, a min, or an average. Now, aggregate function is when you have one of these in the select. Okay, so for example, if I want to find, you know, the the average price of a good, you know, I would put average, and then I would in parentheses, and I, again, this is aggregate function, so I'd put average right here. And I replace this right here, so this would be average. And in parentheses, I put what I'm getting the average of. Okay. So an example is I want to find the sum, the max, the min, and the average of the standard price for all products. So I would select, and again, you're always going to start with select. So I would sum standard price. That means I'm going to add up all the standard price. And you're going to comma because it's going to run this script and then it's going to run this one. If you don't put a comma, you're going to get an error when you run your query. <clears throat> and I want to find the max standard price. So what this is telling me is I want to get the sum of a standard price and also I want the max of what the standard price is. And I want the min of the standard price and I want the average of the standard price from the product table. Okay, And each of these are going to need 
this comma, excuse me, this comma right here. Okay. Now, I don't need a WHERE clause because I don't have any conditions besides I just want to find this information. Again, a WHERE clause is going to be, think of in a way where I'm, I'm wanting deeper information. This is just going to give me a bunch of rows of standard price, you know, the, the sum, max, min, and average from this table, which is the product table. And another example <clears throat> of an aggregate function is I want to retrieve the total products. Okay, so I, again, start with select, and I'm going to count because I want the total amount. And again, this is a wild card. It means I want all the information. I want to I want to collect all the information and and total it up from the product table. Okay, and then <clears throat> what we can do is you know another example is how many s different states are in the database. So I can do select, and then again. I'm counting because I want to know how many. Okay, and I don't want duplicates, so that's why I have this distinct in here. So I'm counting. I don't want duplicates, all the states from the customer table. Now, keep in mind this does not work in Microsoft Access, it's only going to work in like Oracle or other databases. But here's another format that you can do that will work in Microsoft Access. So you can select your states and you can count them. <coughs> Now, unfortunately, this is going to provide some duplicates because, um, unfortunately, when you have an aggregate function like this and having a distinct clause in there, it's not going to work in Access. So you'll select your state, and I want to count all the states, the wildcard, from my customer table, and I'm going to group them by states. Now, when you have an aggregate function, and that's this, the count, and again, these are all aggregate functions. I need to have a group by clause. Okay, now it ha there has to be a group by clause, which is going to be the states. So if we go back to this example, if I can find it here, so <clears throat> I'm going to count all the states up, and it's going to order all of them. Now, what it's going to do is it's not going to return Florida and Florida and Florida. It's just going to count three for Florida. You know, and however, if there's any other duplicates, it's going to count those and come back with the result of three Floridas, you know, one, two New Jerseys, it looks like, um, etc. Okay. <clears throat> now, again, continuing on group by queries. So, group the results according to a set of attributes. Now an attribute is going to be, you know, the customer name, um, state, zip. It's going to be the information inside the table is what an attribute is. Now <clears throat> to apply aggregate functions to subgroups of rows and tables, you know, you have your select, your from, your where, and your group by. Okay, and there's going to be an example right here. So for each product finish, retrieve the, f retrieve the finish and the number of products with that finish and their average price. Okay, so <clears throat> since again we have an aggregate function, which is the average and the count, you need to have a group by, or else it's you're going to get an error. So we're selecting the product finish, comma, and we're going to count all those product finishes. Okay, and we want the average, okay, average average price of that finish. And we're selecting that from the product table, and we have to group it by the product finish now. How do you know what to group it by? Do you group it by the product table, the standard price? No. You group it by the product finish. So when you group by something, you're grouping by what you're trying to retrieve, which is going to be the finish of the product. Or it could be any other information you're trying to retrieve. You have to group it by that. Okay, and some more practice problems. Now we have group by and having queries. So Group the results according to a set of attributes if they satisfy a certain condition. So now we're getting a little deeper. This is a little more complex. So we have select, from, and where. And these are always going to be your main queries that you're going to have, is select, from, and where. Okay, and then you have your group by and your having, which is an, almost another condition of the where. Okay, we should have an example here. Now, for each order with more than two products, Retrieve the order ID and the number of products ordered. OK, 
Okay. So we have, we're going to select our order ID because <clears throat> we need to retrieve the information order ID. We're going to count all of that. Okay. As number of items ordered. Now, this number of items ordered is just another attribute in that table of the order line table. Okay. And we're going to retrieve this information from the order line table. Again, we're going to group by. Again, why are we grouping by? Because we have an aggregate function right here. Okay. And we want, it looks like it says, for each order with more than two products, we want to retrieve. So we're having and we're counting it because we need to know how much we need and more than two. Okay, some more practice problems. <clears throat> now here's some between. Now these are pretty easy. They're actually kind of one of my favorites. Now retrieve the products and their price which are more than 175 and less than 300. So we want more than 175, so 176 and more, but then less 300, so 176 to 299. Okay. Now <clears throat> we're going to select from the product description because we need to retrieve the products and that's going to be the product description and the standard price. If we don't have the standard price in there, this isn't going to work because product description doesn't tell us anything about these these numbers here or you know money wise. Okay, and we're selecting this from the product table where the standard price is between 175 and 300. Now, these are bolded because these need to be in here or else the, the script, the query is not going to know what to run. You know, if you just put standard price 175 and 300, <clears throat> it's not going to know that you want it between those amounts. Okay. And so here's also some nested queries, which are a little more advanced. <clears throat> okay. Where queries within the where clause of an outer query. Okay. So we're finding information essentially when we're, we're looking for information to exclude is when you have a, a nested query or an outer query okay so it's a query within a query okay and when you have a query within a query you need to have your normal select from and where and then you need to put these in parentheses and then do it over again now you're not gonna have the same information in this query as you are in this query and I'll explain here a little bit further on some examples um, so I'll give an example here. So find all the customers who are in the same state with Seminole Interiors. Now we're going to select the customer name, okay, from that previous example, from the customer table where states are in, and then again you need to have the parentheses right here, select state, because we need to know the state from the customer table where customer table equals Seminole interiors okay and again this needs to have these right here so I'll give you an example of this if I can find it here we go okay <clears throat> so here's the state oh, I forgot what the question was Okay, yeah. So the customer name, so find all customers who are in the same state with Seminole Interiors. So customer name, so if we go back, so you have the customer, customer name, <clears throat> here's the Seminole Interiors. So we want to find the information of, or I'm sorry, the customer name in the state. So we want to know who is in the same state. So we have Seminole Interiors here in the state. Okay. So find all customers who are in the same state with Seminole Interiors. So customer name from customer table where state in and then here's your subquery select state we're selecting state from the customer table where customer name equals Seminole Interiors. So this is going to retrieve information to where it's going to have 
the customer, which is going to be Seminole Interiors, with their state. So you're going to have two different columns with information. Okay, and here's a not in. So if we want to find all customers who are not in the same state with Seminole Interiors, it's the same thing as this query, but all we do is just replace it with not in.